Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today we're gonna do something a little fun and just take a look at how the inside of a Super 8 cartridge works. All right, so this is a cartridge of Kodak Super 8 film. Now I know that this is Kodachrome 2 Super 8 and this film specifically expired at the end of the 1970s, but the cartridge design and the mechanics inside of it really haven't changed over the years very much between then and now. So Kodak's current Super 8 stuff still comes in plastic cartridges that look exactly like this. So the only proof that we have to show us that there's actually film inside of here is this film here. And this little slot is where the film gets moved through the cartridge when it's put into a camera. So then this is what's being exposed by the camera through the lens itself. But beyond that, it's entirely plastic and it's all sealed up. So you can see some seams kind of around here where it would have been sealed up in the factory. So this cartridge is really designed as a system for labs to do it and just open it up, discard the cartridge, and then develop the film. Now in order to actually open up our Super 8 cartridge and take a look at the inside and to get the film out of it, you need some sort of sharp object to actually cut through and destroy the cartridge itself. So a knife like one of these would do just fine. Ideally, you use one like this that isn't gonna accidentally slide back in when you're putting pressure onto it. And when I was working in a lab, the way that Super 8 would be handled in the darkroom is the X-Acto knife would only be extended just a little bit with a tip out like that. And this was because when you're handling it in the dark, there's a chance that it can slip and cut into your skin. So actually minimizing how much of a blade is out, if there's only a little bit of a tip, that's enough to cut through the plastic, but means that there shouldn't be too much for you to actually cut yourself. So it's really just a safety precaution at that point. Now, unfortunately, this blade that I have is really dull. So I'm gonna be using one of these and this one's gonna be a little bit trickier to use because if I do put pressure onto the blade, then it will kind of slide back in sometimes. So of course, just as a note, whenever you're going to do this with film that you've actually shot, it would be done in complete darkness because the film is still light sensitive and hasn't been developed through photochemicals yet. But because this is really old and expired film that I'm not gonna use for anything or shoot at this point, then I'm safe to cut it open just to show you guys what's inside. So I'm gonna take my knife and first we're gonna cut open the side that has the unexposed film into it. So it can be a little bit difficult because the plastic can be a little tough. So it's easiest to try and get it right at the curve at the back where you can try and grab it and this will allow me to actually open up the cartridge to be able to see all of the inside. Okay, so now this is the supply side of the film. So I'll take this off. Inside you can see it's just the same plastic as the outside, it's very smooth. So there's nothing that could damage the film as it's running through it. And this is the supply side of the film. The emulsion side of the film is inside and then the backing is facing out. So it's wound emulsion down inside the cartridge. Now the film is wound counterclockwise off of this spool through the camera and feeds around this little roller here. So this is a little hard to see, but this actually feeds the film and rolls really smoothly to help pull the film through the cartridge as you're shooting it in your camera. Then it feeds up past that and along the top here. So you can see that it feeds along and then down into this slot in the very front here. This mechanism doesn't really turn in the middle that holds the film. So that's kind of why you can't rewind film in a Super 8 cartridge properly. It's set up in a way that when you turn the spool on the outside of the cartridge to take up the film, it's not gonna wind film on this side. The mechanism is only winding film on the other side. So now if we take our film out, you can see that there is a plastic disc and this piece of plastic is really smooth so the film can sit up against it and not be damaged at all and it will just be a little bit of a pressure it can kind of bounce and sit in there and wiggle a little bit and as we do take it out you can actually see through to the other side of the cartridge that we haven't opened yet and that's your film on the other side that has been rolled up that has been shot through the camera so i'm just going to cut the film a little bit here so this spool of film would have been originally unshot because it's still on that side of the camera so now that i have broken off one side you can see that there are some seams along the front as well that i can actually now kind of snap off 
which will allow us to see the pressure plate. So that piece slides out and this is the pressure plate system. And this is just like a little cheap metallic piece that has a little bit of an angle on it. So it was a little springy in the cartridge because of the way that it's bent up and fits in the cartridge. Now this piece is the actual pressure plate. This faces out in this direction. So now that I've put it back in, you can see that it kind of bounces and has a little bit of slack there so then when the film is pushed up against it then it does kind of move to hold the film in place. Now you find a pressure plate in almost every sort of film camera out there. Photography and motion picture cameras will all have some sort of system that uses pressure to push the film up against the gate of the camera so that it will be properly aligned to be in focus behind the lens. And then the film I can kind of pull out here. Now it's just feeding into the other side of the cartridge at this point. So even if I actually just spin it up myself, so now the film is entirely in that side of the cartridge, but I am gonna just try and cut the edge again a little bit to be able to get into it a little more cleanly. So this one's not breaking quite as easily as the front piece that I took off in the first place, but it still kind of breaks along the seam of the cartridge here, and I can kind of peel it back away from the cartridge. This is the remaining plastic outer casing. That's the film gate area at the front and then the back that just has the spool and the take up area of the film. So I've tried to thread it back up a little bit the way that it would have run through the cartridge and this coming out of the supply on exposed side runs across the top now through the front and then it spools back up through the bottom here. Now it runs along the bottom and then around a little peg at the back that's not actually a roller, but just a rounded peg, and then is taken up by the supply side of the film. So if we take this off, then this is the last part of our film, that just leaves us with an empty cartridge. So if I put that aside, now we have the rest of our film. So this is held on here by just a little bit to take up when you're initially winding the cartridge through the camera. So this again is just a plastic piece as well and it just kind of holds the film and will spool it. So now if I put that down, you can see again, the main kind of components that you'd find inside a Super 8 cartridge. It's a really basic system. The cartridge itself, which just houses the film on two sides, the little mechanism that turns the film as it goes through, and the plastic housing that protects the film and is light tight until somebody opens it in complete darkness to process it. The film that would go on one side that you're shooting through the camera, and then the film that spools up on the other side once you finish shooting your film, and then the little components that make up the pressure plate system to help keep the film flat against the film gate of your camera. And this clear plastic disc which again is just a little something extra to help protect the film as it's rolling through the cartridge and being shot in the camera. So those are really the main components that you'll find when you break down just a Super 8 cartridge. So there you have it. That's a now there you have it. That's what goes on inside of a Super 8 cartridge. And it's interesting to kind of cut it open and take a look at this funny little cartridge system that Kodak designed back in the 60s and see exactly how it works. And that's actually a big thing that I love about analog gear and analog systems like these is just the mechanics and the little funny things that go on behind the scenes that maybe you don't normally get to see. But it's usually some really interesting and clever design work and innovation that goes into these systems to make them so accessible. Super 8 is great because you can just throw it into a camera and go. It's really easy to use, it's easy to load, and just it's a lot of fun. So thank you you guys so much for watching and checking this out and I really hope that you enjoyed and got a kick out of that because it's just something that I find really fun and just wanted to kind of show off to you guys. And subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to post videos twice a week about all sorts of analog content and gear and film and different formats and systems and breakdowns and stuff where I break things like this one. And I haven't really done like a personal shout out to people who've been watching but I'd like to thank everybody as I've been doing this just for a couple of months but I've gotten to see it grow and people have been commenting and asking questions and I've gotten a lot of great feedback on the stuff that I've been posting and it's just been a lot of fun and I'd like to thank everybody who has been watching it who has spread the word or has subscribed or just clicked on literally anything that I've made and also this video
video is gonna seem a little bit out of place because I'm completely clean shaven and when I post a video in a few days, I will not be completely clean shaven. Also, there's Christmas stuff up behind me and I didn't really do anything for Christmas. So happy post holidays, happy new year to everybody who's watching as well. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.